What's up guys? Justin here with the RealtimeEssentials.com back with another Unity Lighting tutorial for you. So in today's video I wanted to give you an introduction to emissive materials inside of Unity. So emissive materials are materials that actually emit light in your scenes inside of the program. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about emissive materials. These are basically materials that um, they emit light across their surface area inside of Unity. And so you'd think it would be as simple as just applying an emissive material to a surface and that it would emit light, but there's more to it than that. There's some things that we kind of need to understand. And so I will link to the emissive materials section of the manual just so you can take a look at it. But we're going to talk through a little bit of this um, in order to to start getting those emissive results as well as finding a way that makes the real-time emission a little bit better. So first off, what we want to do is I have a scene that I've created in the Universal Render Pipeline and I want to start by adding a material. So in this case, I'm going to um, just right click down here and I'm going to create a material. And we'll just call this Emissive White. And we're just going to take that material and we're going to apply it to this box right here. So now we have this material in here, but it's not really doing anything in our scene. So the first thing we need to do inside of the universal pipeline is note that we're using the standard universal render pipeline slash lit shader. So that's the kind of shader that we have selected and applied to this material. But what we want to do is we want to check the box for emission. And so first off, when I check the box for emission, notice how nothing is happening. And so the reason nothing is happening is because this is currently set to a black material with zero intensity. So there's nothing for it to emit, right? So what we want to do is we want to drag this slider like this. And so I can drag this slider to the left and notice how down below there's options in here for a level of intensity with the light. And so I can click between these different settings. First off, notice that this is starting to glow in our scene, but nothing else is happening. So there's some things we need to look at in order to start getting those results here. But you can adjust the intensity or brightness of the light down here at the bottom. And so part of our problem right now is Unity isn't really set up to do emissive light with the real-time rendering settings at the moment. So there's really two things. The first thing is emissive materials applied to non-static geometry will not contribute to scene lighting. What that means is that means that anything that's set as non-static or something that's not going to move in your scene, Unity is not going to use that to contribute to the scene lighting. It's not really set up to do that. Um, it also says emission will only be received by objects marked as static or light map static in the inspector, meaning that the emissive material in here um, or the, the lighting from the emissive material is only going to be received by something that isn't going to move. And so we can do that by coming in here and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on our box or we're gonna set it to static right here. We're also gonna click on our plane right here and click on static as well. So what that means is that means we've just told Unity that these aren't gonna move around. Well now what we can do is we can go to window, rendering, lighting, that's going to pop up the lighting window right here. And what this is going to allow us to do is this is going to allow us to generate the lighting in here. It's basically going to bake a light map. It's going to create like a texture file that has lighting information contained inside of it. And the reason why it only works with static things is because it takes a while to do that and it can't update that dynamically. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to click on the button for generate lighting. And notice how we've started with a very simple scene right here. But you can see how as this works, this is going through and it's baking a map of the light so that Unity sees how all of these objects are going to be affected by this light. Well now, if we zoom into this, you're going to notice that you're getting a material coming off of the floor or the ground like this. And so one thing to note about that, and notice how if you jump over here, you can see how there's a baked light map, which you can preview that basically took all the surfaces in here and basically calculated out how the lighting was going to affect everything inside of your scene. And so a couple different things about this. So first off, let's change the color of our material. So if I was to go to my emissive white material, and so let's create a new emissive material in here. So if I go to create material, and let's say I call this one emissive blue. 
we'll do the same thing where we're gonna take this and notice how when I applied this emissive blue material in here, the lighting in my scene didn't change. Well, that's because we didn't rebake our light map with this new information. So we can do that in a second, but first let's set this up. So I'm gonna check the emissive box. I'm gonna set this to a blue color like this. I'm gonna set the intensity to something like, we'll set it to two for right now. Well, notice how now it doesn't look very realistic because the light that's coming off this is a different color than the light of the object. So all we have to do to fix that is we're just gonna go to window. We're just gonna go back to our lighting window. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this over here and I'm going to rebake or regenerate my lighting settings. So it's gonna come back here in here and it's gonna rerun that with that new color right here. And so now this blue object is casting a blue light. So let's take a look at something else about this. So if we go ahead and we reset the position on this object, so I'm gonna create this new object over here and I'm gonna move it over like this. So we're just gonna move it kind of close to this object right here. Well, notice how this isn't receiving any light from this object because remember that we didn't set it as static. So if we wanted this to receive light from our emissive material, we would have to set it as a static object and then rebake our light maps, right? So if I do that and then regenerate my lighting, it's gonna go through and it's gonna redo this light map. Well, notice how now this is receiving a little bit of that blue material in here. And so let's say we just wanted to simulate the emissive effect. So we don't necessarily need the light maps in here in order to do that. And so the way that we're gonna do that, let's go in here and let's set our cube right here to non-static and let's rebake our light map. So basically what's gonna happen is all the lighting information that's in here is gonna go away and I can move this around but it's not actually gonna do anything inside my scene, right? It's not a static object anymore. However, what we can do is we can use settings in order to simulate that effect in real time. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a post-processing effect in here in order to create that emissive look and then we're gonna couple it with a light that casts a color um, that's basically the size of this object. So the way that we're gonna do that is first off, we wanna go select our camera. So in this case, we've got a camera right here and I'm gonna take this camera and I'm gonna do a align with view right here so that my camera is showing my box. And so within our camera settings, we wanna come in and we wanna turn on post-processing. So there's an option in here under post-processing that we can use in order to do that. So when I check the box for post-processing, this is gonna enable post-processing effects. So now we've checked the box for post-processing, but there's nothing actually happening in here. And so what we need to do is we need to add a new object inside of our scene called a global volume. And so basically what a volume is, is it's just something that affects the stuff inside of a 3D space. So um, let's go ahead and add this. We could take a look at it. So we're gonna go to game object and under volume, we wanna add a global volume right here. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the position and I'm gonna make sure that it's basically centered on this object right here. And so again, notice how it's not doing anything yet. But what we wanna do is we wanna create a new profile. So notice how there's an option in here for profile right here. We just wanna click on the button for new. And so when we add the button for new, what that's gonna do is that's gonna add a new volume profile to this space and we wanna add an override. And so what the override is gonna do is that's gonna allow us to add different post-processing effects in this situation. So you can add different effects that are gonna occur inside of this space. Well, in this case, we wanna select the option for Bloom. And so when we select the option for Bloom, that's gonna give us a number of different options that our camera is going to see. So I'm gonna click on this right here for intensity. I'm gonna bring the Bloom up a little bit. Well, notice how when I bring the bloom up, what this is doing is this is adding a glow around this object right here. So now if I move my cube around, then this object is going to have this kind of like bloom glowing effect around it, right? So if I look at this, this is basically making this glow around the object right here. But let's say that we had a couple other objects in here, right? And remember, this is only showing up because my camera has the post-processing applied to it. But let's say that we were to add a couple other objects though. So let's say we were to add a couple different cubes, for example. So I'm gonna add a cube, I'm gonna reset it and place it right here. The problem with this is it's not actually casting any light, right, on this cube. So let's say we were to take this cube and scale it along the 
z-axis and the x-axis, or sorry, along the y-axis, like this. Well, notice how this is giving me this bloom setting in here, but it's not actually casting any kind of light in here. Well, in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to simulate the casting of light by adding a point light and parenting it to this cube. So, because point lights can work in real time, right? So, let's say I was to add a light, and we're just going to call it a point light right here. And I'm just going to reset the position, and I'm going to center it on this object right here. So, we're just going to make sure that this is centered on our cube like this. We'll jump back into perspective mode. And then notice how now that light is actually casting light on this surface right here. But it's casting the wrong color light. So what we want to do is we just want to adjust the color of our light right here. And we just want to mouse over our object. And we're just going to click on this object right here. Well, now it's casting a blue material, right? And you can adjust the intensity up or down if you decide that you want to do that, as well as the range at which it's going to cast light. So maybe you don't want it set like way up here. Maybe you want this a little bit lower. But then we're just going to take that object and we're going to make it a child object. So we're going to cut this object. We're going to select our cube and we're going to paste it as a child. Well, now. If I move my cube around, this light is going to move with my cube. And I'm going to adjust this so that it's actually inside of my box like this. And so now you can see if I bring this close to this object, it's going to light it with that blue light. So you can use that in order to simulate that lighting in here. So as long as you don't put your intensity up too high, if you put your intensity up like way or if you put your intensity up way high like this, it looks kind of weird because it does look like the light is coming off of a singular point. But if you keep your intensity somewhat low um, like this, then it's going to cast that light and you really can't tell that it's not coming from the glowing of the object. So this is a great workaround for baking your emissive light maps inside of Unity. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If this was helpful to you, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.